Well, here we are again. It's Monday and another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and this is Monday. It is July 17th. Now, in all the shows I do, we do one thing. We look at hot penny stocks. We're looking at stocks that are under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And as we're looking at these stocks, I'm giving you my opinions on what to look for, what to be leery of. And as I said, they're just my opinions. I am not licensed. Anything I say is strictly my opinion. And I do make mistakes occasionally. I'm human. Hey, we've even discovered AI is making mistakes. So I deserve a break if I need one. So this is why I tell you to always do your own due diligence behind me. But I love sharing hot penny stocks with you. Now, I find hot penny stocks by going to the charts first. I look at the charts and I'm looking for heat in that chart. I'm looking for volume coming in or a breakout setup or big, huge bounces back to back. When I find a hot chart, then I go rummaging around through all of the filings and the news presses looking for a catalyst to get the chart moving or to keep it moving. And I bring these sort of stocks to you every day, well, at least five days a week. And I've got some right now. So the first stock we're going to take a look at comes from the OTC market. This is Spire Inc, ticker SPYR. She has a brilliant chart. She's got a perfect atypical breakout chart. 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious, leveling off with the price right up underneath it, ready to break out. We only need a catalyst. Well, this company hasn't had any news since February and a news press came out today. The volume went up a little, the price went up a little, and the chart looks primed. So I think it's a good time to look at Spire. She finished today with almost 19% at a price of 0017. She's on the pink tier, current, has only one of those green ticks we're always talking about, a transfer agent verified. It's an important one. She hasn't got the verified profile. Now that's not a deal breaker, but we would like to see it. Surprisingly, she does have independent directors. As far as I know, you only need independent directors if you've got plans on uplisting. Well, I see them listed here, so they must have plans. So what does Spire Inc. do? Well, they tell us here that they are a technology company focused on the Internet of Things market. Spire's business includes GeoTrack, a business that develops and manufactures entirely self-contained, ultra-small mobile Internet of Things modules for asset tracking, their trackers, <laughs> location-based services with their trackers, and sensor modules for remote monitoring. I don't know if these are trackers, but that's the business that they're in. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she did jump a little bit, going from just a little over 4 million shares to just a little under 4.5 million shares. Share structure not the greatest. Outstanding share counts is up there at 558 million. If we can trust how many shares the insiders own, looks like we've got roughly 400 million shares in the float. Financials, not any prettier. At the end of 2022, they tell us they made, no, not $2. <laughs> we've got three zeros here. We got to put behind any of the numbers on these charts. So they made a whopping $2,000 at the end of 2022. But that's better than what they've been doing quarterly. Zippo, they've got nothing coming in, which begs the question, what's your balance sheet look like? Well, that's not very pretty either. They're cash in the bank. Thank God for those three zeros. They got $3,000 in the bank. Assets, 9.6 million. Assets, that's good. Liabilities, about 20 million double their assets. So they've got twice as much liabilities as assets, very little money in the bank, and they're not making any money. Something's got to change real fast here. Disclosures for the company. We have nothing here since March. So let's just jump on into that news. All right, we've got news up here, but this isn't the most current news. This is that last piece of news that came out in February. GeoTrack takes a bite out of internet complexity. Down here is the most current piece of news. This is the one that tells us their wholly owned subsidiary launched a revolutionary miniature tracking device. They've launched it. This is what we've been waiting for. They've been talking about it, but now they've actually launched it. 
On July 17th, Spire, a diversified technology company developing products, leveraging the Internet of Things market for consumer use and large-scale applications in industries, is pleased to announce the continued development of the revolutionary GeoTrack Micro Tracker modem. It's a groundbreaking miniature tracking device posed to disrupt the industry with its unprecedented small size and powerful capabilities. This is ideal for tracking your assets, whether they be vehicles, personal belongings, even your pets. Whatever you consider, you could probably use it for that. They tell us that the GeoTrax device ensures worldwide connectivity, enabling real-time tracking and monitoring in any corner of the globe. Now that's impressive. It's not just the United States. I have one that I use on my pets, but it's only good in the United States. This is good anywhere. Not that I would anticipate your car going across the ocean or your dog going across the ocean, but maybe put it on an expensive painting in case it gets stolen. Chances are it would be exported out of the country. So that's what they've got going on right now. We haven't got any deals. There's no other news. It's not like they have had somebody buy a bunch of these, Walmart or Radio Shack. Is Radio Shack still around? <laughs> but it is news. And all we need is a little catalyst, a soft catalyst, even a stale catalyst to get a hot chart moving. And this chart is hot. Nothing's perfect, but this is looking really good. This is SPYR. And we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is the free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So we are looking at a six month, four hour view for Spire. We have a high back here of just a little over a penny and a half mid-November. She's been falling all this time, totally under the 200. She has never touched it yet, not once in all of this time. You can see from back here, the volume has been getting strong, but it's popcornish off and on, off and on. But what we've got is the 200 as close as it's ever been in six months. She got very close to touching it, but hasn't done it. Now, what I would expect, honestly, is a directional, intentional spike. I would expect one of these to break through, come way up here, and then come down real fast. Not down, just right back to where it started from. However, this is getting planed out so quickly, it may skip that step. It may just push itself up onto that 200 with a big old bar and start to run. A nice piece of news, a tweet would really help. Our volume is not that strong right now. Volume obviously is going to help. The oscillators are showing she is got strength. It's not real strong, but she's got strength. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is climbing. Our MACD has just had a crossover. It is pushing up and our RSI is over 55. That's as low as I like to go. It is at 59 plus. So things are perfectly set up for just a little bit of push to get this thing to go. This is a real good time to look at it maybe even a good time to buy. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. We got a low bubble here of triple zero eight. She got up over that 50 and beelined it straight to that 200. Got over it, came back down, came right back down to her 200 haul. That's where she started here. Our 200 haul is like our 200 day SMA. You take 200 days of prices, average them all together, but with the 200 day haul, you put more credence on the most current prices. So you end up with a line closer to the price and it does pay respect to it. As you can see here, not a lot of people use it. I do. So, oh, who asked that? <laughs> Why is it two colors? It's purple when it's falling and it's blue when it's going up. You can actually do that on any of your SMAs, but I do it just on my haul. So she's bounced off the 200 haul and she hit her head on the 200 SMA getting pinched in between the two. You can see that cone between this red line and the blue line. And then it just finally jumped out with one huge bar. She's broke free. She's out of her cage. She's starting to run. Oscillators, we've had our crossover on our PPO just today, starting to push up. We just crossed our signal line on our MACD today, another power sign and our RSI is still at about 59. Five day, five minute. Boy, look at how flat that 50 day SMA is. 
She was on top, rode under it, rode over it, rode over it. So she's just been going sideways the hard way. But this is the first time it looks like she's pulling away from the 50. Here she was falling away. Here she was wrestling with it. But here she's taking off. She is floating on her nine-day SMA beautifully. 50 is there, turned up. 20 is in between them. Perfect setup here. Osculators, they've got some strength. I'm not saying it's real strong, but it's not weak and it's not falling. And gee whiz, our RSI is still roughly 59 on all three time frames. You normally don't see the RSI steady like that. So Spire has just had news. They say they've just launched it. Where? Where did they launch it? Should we expect a piece of news to tell us they've just made a deal with this company or that company or this store? If we do, that could be the catalyst to the moon. S-P-Y-R. I'm showing it to you early. Now let's climb up that ladder on the OTC market. We are looking at a QX stock now. This is the best tier on the OTC. The most trustworthy, the most transparent, as close as you're going to get to major exchange transparency. They audit their financials and they literally tell us everything that's going on with the company. We are looking at SGTM, Sustainable Green Team. Got a brilliant chart. It's not an atypical breakout chart, but it's acting like it. 200-day SMA is coming down, price right up underneath it, breaking through right now. And why not? She's had a lot of news here recently. Now, not currently. She hasn't had any current news, but she had lots of news in May, lots of news in June. Big news about huge deals they made, big revenues coming in, and preparing to uplist. Not just talking about it, actually getting ready to do it. So there's lots of reasons to be looking at SGTM, Sergeant Tom. <laughs> Sergeant Tom finished the day at $2.39, just shy of 19% gains. She is on that best tier, the QX of the OTC, and she's got all the green ticks we could hope for. Verified profile and transfer agent. Cha-ching! Independent directors for that uplisting. Cha-ching! And penny stock exempt. This is a double. Cha-ching! Cha-ching! <laughs> this is a bonus. This means they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars in revenues or assets during that entire time, and have kept up with their financials. They're working. They're making money. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They've shown themselves reliable, responsible. So they are not legally a penny stock. Even though they're under five bucks and on the OTC, they are not a penny stock. That's like calling a 22 year old a kid. You don't like it. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here they are a wholesale manufacturer and national supplier of wood-based mulch and soil. Their specialty products are Humi Soil and Exelibur 8. They sell this to anybody who'll buy it. Mass merchandisers, home centers, hardware centers, nurseries, garden centers, of course, those people, convenience stores, food stores, <laughs> like I said, they'll sell it to anybody. The company also provides arbor care and storm recovery services at the residential, commercial, and municipal levels, while offering waste solutions to large and small scale waste disposal and recycling companies located throughout the southeastern United States. The company's subsidiary mulch manufacturing is the largest provider of cypress mulch in the country. So what was the relative volume around this today? Well, that's about 600% increase. <laughs> They're not big numbers though. Both of them say she's still under the radar. She was doing roughly 4,000 shares a day. Today, she did almost 30,000 shares. It is a strong increase, but we're still under the radar. Share structure for SGTM. Well, this is better than the last stock. Outstanding share count is about 84 million. Looks like the insiders have the lion's share, if you'll excuse the pun, about 76 million. That only leaves us with 8.4 million. A legitimate low float. Anything under 10 million is a low float. That is excellent. 8.4 million shares, and we're going to presume it's right. Financials for Sergeant Tom. Well, she's been doing between 30 and 35 million for the last four years. But what stands out to me here is four years ago, she did just about as much as she did last year. But look at the profit difference from 3.6 to 8 million. 
They've been tweaking that formula, and I'm liking what they're doing. Quarterly. Uh-oh. I think they better work on that formula a little bit more. Going from 10.3 million down to 7.7 .7 million, and the profit margin is falling. Just when you think things are getting good. Disclosures for SGTM. All right, we do have two 8Ks here. Uh, one was for a management change and one was for some sort of bylaws or something like that, but nothing that we need to be jumping into and reading. So let's take a look at that news. Now, I told you the company didn't have any current news. Uh, that's not exactly the truth. They do. They've had four pieces of news come out in the last two weeks. That's current, but it's not news that we can put to use. They're letting us know that they're going to be on this show new to the street. And they told us this over and over again. Now, the news I think is important came out in June and came out in May. All three of these are the same sort of news. They're about the same thing. It's about a deal getting bigger and bigger. They started this off May 23rd. The next piece of news is 24th, then the 25th. That's how quickly this deal got big. And the other two pieces of news both come from June. Now, we only really need to jump into one piece of news to see what's going on here, and that's this one. It came out May 23rd. The company receives a $46.8 million human soil purchase order from the Middle East and Africa. Now, from what I gather, that's their name, not their location. They tell us here the company's name is VRM Biologic Middle East and Africa. They tell us the purchase order is for 1.3 million cubic yards of SGTM's new humus soil product, currently being manufactured in three strategic facilities located in Florida and Georgia, right here in the good old USA. The purchase order is broken into five scheduled pickups from the date of the order up until December 31st, 2024. So it's not one big order at one time, it's five orders spread out up until the end of 2024. Now the product itself, humus soil is a 100% organic soil amendment converted from any vegetative green waste or compositable material and stimulates natural reactions that manufactures and stores soil moisture. Humus soil reduces the need for fertilizers and chemicals while increasing production of agricultural products including livestock grazing on the pasture land. So that's what they're doing. This is the big deal. Now, since that order is so big, the first thing they did was go out and buy more materials. And that's the piece of news the next day. The company enters into a purchase agreement to increase humus soil production with an additional 4 million cubic yards of materials ordered. Then the company they just made that deal with, Middle East Africa, they came back and they purchased 7 million more shares. So they want to be a part of this company. The next two pieces of news are about them uplisting. They filed their 10-12G, which is what you file when you're on the OTC. We want to see the 10-12B. That's what they file when they get up on the major exchanges. But they have got investor relations. They've got accountants. They are actually working on uplisting right now. They're not just talking about it. They are working on it. So we've got lots of catalysts sitting on the table here, and the chart is hot. And if another piece of news falls, oh my God, this thing could really rip fast. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. This is ticker SGTM, Sustainable Green Team. That is a six month, four hour view. Back in December, we had a high of $6.53. At the end of April, after a long fall, we hit a low of 81 cents. And off of that low bubble, she has been bouncing and climbing ever so slowly but steadily, getting across the 50 on top of the 20 and working her way towards the 200. And what do we see? We see a directional, intentional spike, breaking through the 200 before it's flat. Too steep to jump up on, you're gonna slide down that hill and fall. So it broke the ice, came back home. It did not come any deeper, it just came right back to where it started from went sideways and as soon as she got her opportunity she took off she broke that 200 and she's off and running you can see our volume is growing right now our 50-day sma is just about to cross the 200 that's a golden cross it's a sign of power and look at all of our oscillators ppo pushing up macd pushing up oscillator clear up there at 68 
everything looks gorgeous. 20 day, one hour view. So she was basically just going sideways here. This big jump was that one that broke through the 200, breaking the ice. She came back down to homeland and then she fell down to the 200 on this chart. Gave it a last tag, just a last tag. I love you, but I gotta go. And it's out of here. She has crossed all of the SMA. She's up on top, floating on her nine. Here comes the 50 day SMA churning up. Everything is looking strong. Look at our oscillators. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon. RSI is at 65. That is a beautiful, strong setup. Five day, five minute. Going sideways here, hit a low of $1.55, bounced back up, got over that 50 and has not looked back. She jumped right up to that nine day SMA and she's been pushing up, hit a high today of $2.39 and that's where she's at. She didn't even pull back. She just went straight over. Everything is really looking good here, folks. We've got a lot of catalysts building momentum. All we need is a little more news. I mean, she's already hot. She's already growing. She's already breaking out. And that's all old news, right? Now, of course, they're on TV on this new to the street show. Maybe talking every day or every week the way they are is helping the stock. Whatever they're doing, the chart looks good. The news is building up. The revenues are about to start coming in. I like it. SGTM. Surprisingly, our last stock is on the pink tier of the OTC and they're making billions of dollars of revenue. This is Latam Airlines, ticker LTMAY. The chart is looking good. That's what caught my attention. And the company's doing decently. Now, three years ago when COVID came in, this airline got smacked down like everybody else, was not doing any business and it hurt them bad. They went into bankruptcy. They were in bankruptcy for three years. They came out of it November of last year. And I did a video when they came out of it. Go check it out. Now they were at 32 cents then and it was looking good. Then some new problems cropped up, some debt we weren't aware of, and a strange and peculiar arbitrage. See, this company's common stock is over in Chile and their ADRs, their stock that's being held by banks is over here. And you can trade your ADRs for common shares if you want to. I'm not quite sure why you need to, but you can. The problem was the arbitrage. The two should have been the same price, but they weren't. There was a huge difference. So between the debt and the arbitrage, the way they decided to fix it was throw shares at it. And they threw the most shares I've ever seen thrown at a company, diluted it, to heck. And a lot of people just walked away. Well, now it's been eight months. COVID's over. Business is picking up. They're buying more planes. They're making more money. Things are looking good, including the chart. So I'm thinking this is a good time to look at the stock again, at least for a day trade or a swing trade, not a long hold, not with as many shares as they've got. So Latam Airlines finished the day at 72 cents with about 18 and percent gains. She's on the pink tier and current, but we don't have any other information here. No green ticks whatsoever. Now in their brief description here, they tell us that Latam Airlines is a Chilean airline holding company headquartered in Santiago, Chile. It is considered the largest airline company in Latin America with subsidiaries in Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, and Peru. So what was the relative volume around the company today? With all those shares and that's all they sold, <laughs> they're normally doing 545,000 shares. Today they did about 50% more, 763,000 shares. Looking at the share structure, are you ready? I wanna give you a chance, sit down, take a deep breath, grab the handles of your seat, here we go. Share structure. Don't know what the float is and I'm not even curious because the outstanding share count is way, way, way too high. 605 billion shares. No, you're not gonna see a pop-up that says I just made a mistake. That is what they got, 605 billion shares. It's a lot, folks. That's why I'm not interested in as a long hold, but for a day trade, a short swing, I'm just playing the momentum. I'm not worried about it. Now the financials, that's something we do like. 
at the end of 2022, we were back up to $9.3 billion. Remember those three zeros over here. We got to put those behind every number on these charts. And she did make $1.2 billion in profit. Quarterly, they don't give us any information. And I really don't know why. But the company is growing. Disclosures. They've got lots of them over here. And most of them don't say a whole lot. However, since they have no news whatsoever, we've got to get some information from one of these filings. So I found one that they turned into an article. This was a Form 6K. They just turned it into an article for us so we had something to read. So I'm going to enlarge this for you. This is just what's going on right now. It's not big news. It just shows you they're doing business and business is getting better. Latham Group transported 5.9 million passengers just in June. During this period, seven new international routes were launched. Latham Cargo added its 18th cargo freighter, which will enable it to increase its share of the region's export markets. And in June of 2023, passenger traffic increased by 33% compared to the same period in 2022. Nothing major, no big catalyst. They're just doing business in the billions of dollars and business is good. Everything is good. Lights are green. The only problem we got is those bloody shares and the volume is low, no doubt about it. But the chart is still hot. And I tell you all the time, you only need a little catalyst. Even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. Let's go take a look at this. We are looking at Latham Airlines. She is flying high with lots of pride. This is ticker LTMAY. We are looking at a six month, four hour view. Six months ago, her high was $1.06 and near the end of May, she hit a low of 25 cents. Now we looked at it right here on this blue line. That was on uh, November 16th. That's when you'll find the video. The price was 32 cents. I have drawn a support resistance line here across the page. As you can see, bouncing off of this low bubble, she hit her head on that support resistance. Came down, negotiated with the 200, hit it again, and now she is launching. So it's come into play. It was a strong resistance. She had to get over it to start climbing, and she's done that. Our volume is getting stronger. It's not as strong as we like by any means, but it is getting stronger. Osculators are very strong. PPO, MACD, RSI, all of them are on fire and pushing to the moon. 20-day, one-hour view. Up, up, up. Low bubble in this corner, 40 cents. High bubble in that corner, 73 cents. In the last 20 days, you've had yourself about 75% gains. She was on top of the 50 here. She's been riding that 50. You can see when she started to pull back, it was the 50 that held her. And now she's blowing the 50 away and she is climbing fast. She hit her high of 73 cents and she pulled back to 72, which is where she sits right now. You can see the volume in the last couple of days have been strong without any new news. And the oscillators are still blazing. Five day, five minute. So she was kind of flat for a few days this week and then she just started climbing three days ago. She was at 53 cents at 73 cents now. She is floating. She is staying right above her 50, bouncing on the 20, hanging around the nine. She's looking really nice. And look at our 200. Our 200 has come around like that, like she just wants to keep going up. Oscillators are finally showing a little bit of coolness. For what? That little straight across there and that one red bar? I mean, look, they all started to turn down. Still, I like Latham. Latham's making a lot of money. Everybody knows Latham. She's picking up more business. She just bought another cargo plane and another Airbus so they can do more business. Everything is good. They're out of any hot water. They're out of any trouble. The only problem we got are those shares. It is a Mount Everest of shares, my God. But if we're just playing momentum, don't worry about that. Get in, get out, take your profits, move on to the next one. Every day I try to bring you hot stocks. 
Stocks that got charts that are on fire so that we don't have to find catalytic news. Just any sort of news. Soft catalyst, stale catalyst. As long as you've got a little bit more fuel to throw in the fire, the fire will keep burning. Every day I bring them to you, I share a little information with you. You're supposed to follow behind me and do your own due diligence because it is your money you're investing. Thanks for your time, folks. Follow behind me now. Go do some due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.